Hey, what is going on guys? My name is Targum Spark, and today we're gonna to be talking about how to choose a VPN for yourself. Um, now, in this video, I'm gonna kinda of tell you how I choose uh, my VPNs and stuff like that, but I'm kinda of gonna educate you on how you should go about the process, how you should go about choosing a VPN. Um, how can you decide which VPN is best to use? Now, the tricky thing out there is that a lot of people kind of re rely on VPN review sites and even YouTube channels like mine to base their decisions on which VPN to use. Now, for the most part, this isn't the worst way to do so, but you can always have to treat reviews with a grain of salt. Um, most VPN review websites out there are showing you know, the same top five rated VPNs, and there's a reason for that. These uh, VPN companies out there most likely do own these VPN review sites or have really good sponsored deals that aren't really disclosed. Uh, it just works that way, uh, mostly with uh, a lot of industries. And you'll see the same thing with game reviews or other product reviews, especially in the mattress industry. There's a lot of controversy about how um, you know various companies own review websites without proper disclosure. But anyways, guys, today the first thing you're gonna wanna do when choosing a VPN is you're gonna wanna find an affordable VPN. Now, this kinda depends on you as a user and what kind of budget you have. Are you someone who's on a strict budget? Are you someone who has a bit of money um, laying around that you, you, know, you could purchase maybe the most expensive option? Um, are you someone who's shooting for more of the middle price line? Um, these are things you gotta consider. Um, here's some options here. So private internet access is gonna be the bottom of the barrel. It's pretty much gonna be the cheapest VPN out there um, that I would recommend using. It's only $6.95 for starting out for a month. Now that is cheap. Um, you're not gonna find that many much cheaper VPNs out there, hands down. It's really only $39 uh, for a year as well, which is super cheap. Um, AirVPN is also a decent VPN out there that's pretty cheap as well. Perhaps that has a better reputation, but maybe the application isn't as strong and it's gonna be around eight dollars a month now of course you can use discount codes and stuff like that with other vpn providers to get the price even lower perhaps now private internet access is so cheap at 695 that they don't really have any discount codes running that, that makes sense right um, now we have another vpn right here torguard vpn is going to be 999 a month not quite as cheap as you know private internet access starting out um, which was running around you know 695 However, Torcard VPN is much different than private internet access in that it always has these discount codes running. My code best 10 VPN um, that Torcard uh, let me create through um, their affiliate panel actually never really ends. It's a 50% off coupon, which is insane. That means that Torcard VPN is only gonna be $5 a month, which is cheaper than even private internet access. And again, the reason that this is, is because Torcard is super generous with these discount codes and you could slash these prices like crazy. If you're one of those people who has just a ton of money and you don't care about uh, you know um, anything about pricing at all, then maybe ExpressVPN or one of these more expensive VPNs could be an okay option. Now with ExpressVPN, this is gonna be the top tier kind of pricing option that you're gonna go for if you just have a lot of money laying around. Now the only thing here is that just because it's more expensive doesn't mean it's necessarily that much better. Now ExpressVPN might be a little bit simpler to set up than you know something like Private Internet Access or TorGuard, but when I say simple, maybe you know five seconds saved. You know with these other VPN providers, you pretty much get your login credentials emailed to you. You download the app, you log in, and you're good to go. With ExpressVPN, they just kind of give you a code that you copy and paste, and then you're good to go. So it's a little bit easier to set up. But really, in terms of you know these two uh, VPN options using TorGuard and ExpressVPN, TorGuard actually gives you faster speeds for a, um, a lower price, and it also works with um, you know Netflix as well. Once you purchase that dedicated IP, if you do purchase the dedicated IP, it's going to push the price to around nine dollars a month, um, which means you have 100% unblocked Netflix access. Where um, this is still going to be thirteen dollars a month with Netflix included, so it's still going to be four dollars a month more expensive. But anyways, guys. This is kind of like the range between some VPNs out there. You have that cheap price, $9.99 and you know, $13. But again, uh, some of these VPNs like TorGuard are very generous with these discount codes, getting you 50% off, so that's gonna be $5. So you need to really consider pricing when you're picking a VPN. Um, that's one way to start off. Another thing you need to consider when choosing a VPN is going to be the speeds. Now this sometimes makes or breaks a VPN provider. 
like I just mentioned, ExpressVPN is $13 and you think it'd be the fastest, you know, best VPN out there, but it actually has a little bit slow speeds in my, in my tests. A lot of people don't really count speeds as kind of like an important um, category because they say speeds really vary by your location and that is true. However, speeds um, for each VPN do have a set amount of efficiency. And some VPNs just are faster than others. And some VPN providers clearly put more work into picking servers and optimizing um, you know, their connections and stuff like that to give you a better speedy experience. Not only that, but some VPN providers are especially good for torrenting. Um, so that's something you get to consider. Um, a lot of VPNs out there that are recommended um, for things like anonymity. Um, Molvad VPN is one of the top tier VPNs in terms of anonymity. You don't even really have to give them any credentials or anything like that upon sign up and they are a pretty decent VPN. However, their app kind of sucks and they are a bit slow. A couple other VPNs out there are also a bit slow in my tests. Um, most VPNs are actually aren't that quick. But yeah, if I were you, I wouldn't really ch um, use VPNs, maybe like um, Tunnel Bear, not the fastest speeds, Express VPN, not the fastest speeds, Viper VPN, Nord VPN, Hotspot Shield, Cyber Ghost, um, hide my ass, buffered VPN. None of these VPNs really have good speeds in my tests, so just keep a lookout, you know, for those VPNs and maybe do a skip around. -y. So another thing you guys are gonna have to consider is um, logging policies. Um, that's the third thing you need to consider when picking a VPN. Um, does your VPN log your information? Um, are they gonna be able to give your information away? Now, mostly this is for anonymity and kind of the reputation of your VPN if you could trust them. You don't want to be picking a VPN that's giving away your information and stuff like that, you know, you guys, because that's what you're paying for, right? Um, you want to pay for something and you want to get that anonymity. So with a VPN, you got to go ahead and check out their privacy policy. This can be a bit annoying, you know, sifting through all this text and stuff like that. But I picked Tunnel Bug here as a good example of a VPN that actually has a not that good of a privacy policy. So Tunnel Bear, they collect a good amount of logs, and this is something you just need to kind of watch out for. Now, I'm not saying that you know Tunnel Bear is going to get you in trouble or something for something you're doing on the internet, but chances are you don't really want to risk it. With Tunnel Bear, they collect a lot of logs here. They collect the operating system version you're using, the application version. Um, how active you are, how much bandwidth you're using, uh, various other operational events um, and stuff like that to, you know, uh, for marketing purposes um, to market their VPN. So this is a VPN that has pretty uh, intense logging policy. So it's just something to look out for. And when you're checking out your VPN, make sure to check out the logging policy, um, you know, for uh, zero logs policy. So the VPN like TorGuard, this is something you want to see more. Uh, pretty decent length of a privacy policy here. But the things they do collect, they are pretty specific about and in what they do collect. So TorGuard, as you can see here, collects information. However, all this information they do list is just information on their website. Um, they don't use any collected information about, um, see right here, it does not collect any data from virtual private network or proxy services. This is what you wanna see. This is a good logging policy and that it doesn't use any information or log any data from their VPN or proxy services. So this is the kind of privacy policy you are gonna to wanna to look for and should be an indicator of you picked the right VPN. So guys, um, when you're picking a VPN, you need to consider um, your, your, your needs. Um, what exactly are you getting a VPN for? Are you picking VPN to protect your torrent IP? Are you picking a VPN to remain anonymous on the internet? Are you picking a VPN to kind of unblock game restrictions? Are you picking a VPN to use on the go? Are you picking a VPN to unblock uh, Netflix geo restrictions? These are all things you need to consider because not every VPN is gonna be good at each one of these things. And now some VPNs are. Um, my favorite VPN that's pretty much good at everything I've already mentioned in this video already is TorGuard. Um, but a lot of VPNs don't really hit every mark. Um, I'm going to give some examples. So if you're wanting to use a VPN on the go at, you know, at Starbucks or airlines or stuff like that, you're going to need a good mobile app. Now, most VPN providers do have a good mobile app, but um, you know, AirVPN is a company that doesn't really have a good mobile application. Um, if you want to unblock Netflix, if you are in the UK, for example, and you want access to the US Netflix content library, you're probably not going to want to use private internet access because they don't really work with Netflix. Now, you also need to consider if your VPN is going to be allowing torrenting or if they want you to torrent. Tunnel Bear is a VPN that doesn't allow torrenting. Um, so you really need to consider exactly why you're using a VPN 
and see if the VPN really does work um, for your specific need. I recommend Torgoid because they have a mobile app. They work um, with torrenting. They work with Netflix if you purchase that dedicated IP. Um, and they pretty much work with everything. Um, there, are some, there are a couple other VPNs out there um, that pretty much work with everything. Um, you know, but they might have a certain limitations. Uh, ExpressVPN, I would say, it has a good mobile app. It works with Netflix, um, and it works with torrenting, but maybe the speeds aren't quite as good as you'd need, and it is a bit expensive. So just think of that. Does it suit your needs? Does it work for what you need to do? One other thing you guys could do before picking a VPN is just checking out what kind of reputation the VPN has. Uh, with a website like Trustpilot, you could get a pretty good idea of the VPN's reputation, but just remember to keep uh, you know these user reviews um, within a degree of skepticism. And now, when I check out reviews on Trustpilot to see what people think of a VPN, I usually shoot for the three and two star reviews, since usually the one star reviews are so angry they can't remain logical and have good things to say about a VPN that are fair, and often these uh, are other VPN companies slandering other VPN companies. Same thing goes with five star reviews. Uh, a lot of times it's just shills or just people trying to boost a VPN score. That's most often uh, you know, the VPN company itself. Now of course there are good one and five star reviews as well that are legitimate. Just uh, keep them within a degree of skepticism like I said. So shoot for the two and three star reviews is the most objective and kind of honest um, look at a VPN to see you know, what they could improve and stuff like that. Of course, we could check out some uh, VPNs right now, something like private internet access. Uh, you could get a good indicator of how the website works. So, of course, you have you know the breakdown here. Private internet access has a decent you know breakdown, 7.8 out of 10. Um, you could go to you know some of these three stars to get some kind of idea of what's wrong with private internet access. And essentially, the idea here is that um, you know the, the service is so popular that a lot of IPs actually get restricted. Some other VPN companies like ExpressVPN, you could also find some interesting uh, things that customers are saying, like um, you know uh, that there is connection problems in China and that the customer service can be a bit dodgy. So just check out this website if you have time to get a kind of a reputation uh, overview of what uh, users think of a VPN, uh, just uh, on a larger scale than uh, just you know going to Reddit or something like that. Um, this website does kind of try to block out um, fake reviews and stuff like that, but just remember to shoot for the three and two star reviews. If your VPN doesn't really have too many three or st two star reviews, chances are it's a pretty good VPN and there probably isn't too many things wrong with it. Alright guys, thanks for checking out uh, this section and we're moving into the conclusion of this video. Alright guys, thanks for checking out this video. Check the links down in the description down below for um, some of the VPNs that I've managed to pick with some of these criteria. Just remember that picking a VPN shouldn't always be the easiest thing. And if you really want to get the best product, you're going to have to do some research and think critically. Anyways, guys, thanks for checking out this video. My name is Thomas Bark from Best10VPN.com.